Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. I'm very happy to give you a completely um, new or uh, additional perspective on uh, HTTPS adoption on the internet. Well, uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, if your doctor says that, this is quite worrisome. If you're sitting in an airplane traveling from Europe to Vancouver and your pilot says, I have no idea what I'm doing, immediate danger is on the way. And if your system administrator of the local sushi restaurant or your bank or whatever company's website says, I have no idea what I'm doing, it's maybe not perceived as an immediate life threat, but I also think it is still quite worrisome in an age where everything is connected to the internet. And actually, I have no idea what I'm doing is a statement that one of our study participants said during the study when trying to set up HTTPS. So talking a little bit about the motivation and goals of our research, we wanted to explore reasons for TLS misconfigurations from the administrator's perspective. The study tasks that we gave um, administrators were to configure HTTPS on Apache, so actually quite easy task. You have here a web server with HTTP, make it HTTPS, please. Um, get a certificate, create a certificate signing request. Um, then uh, do some integration when you have the certificate, do some hardening, do some testing, and then you're done. So actually, sounds quite easy for a technically capable person, um, it seems. But is it really that easy? Well, there is um, plenty of anecdotal evidence out there that suggests that it is even hard for experienced users. And also, I think the numbers that uh, we heard in the last talk um, also correspond to this assumption. So I would like to show you a very quick um, part of a video by Jan Su by, from EFF, um, which was presented at DEF CON. Oh, hello, Parker. Hi, Jan. What are you doing today? I'm just going to try to set up HTTPS on my website. That sounds fun. Yeah. I'm... Yeah, fun, right? So we have anecdotal evidence that even for experienced users, it is not that funny. And so this gave us a really, really good idea for a lab study just to do the same, just to take knowledgeable um, persons who have wide knowledge in this field and ask them to set up HTTPS and then observe what kind of usability problems they experience. So this was what we did. We conducted a lab study with 28 knowledgeable participants. Um, so we invited them to the lab. We um, gave them a web server, a Apache web server, um, and asked them to just set up HTTPS. <clears throat> we had a fictive CA, um, which made it easier for them to get a valid um, certificate when uploading a certificate signing request. And then we had an experimenter who was sitting next to the participant and observing them. So we asked the participants to think aloud, to articulate everything that they thought, and we observed everything that they were doing. We've refrained from video recording because we had um, a pre-study and we saw that especially um, knowledgeable people don't really like to be filmed when they're doing these kinds of things because they don't really want to be filmed when they're making mistakes. So this is quite sensitive when you work with these kinds of people uh, in terms of, of a usability study. And yeah, to then um, really see if our results are ecologically valid, we conducted additional interviews with seven really experienced security auditors. Yeah, so um, I would just like to talk about a little bit about Let's Encrypt um, as well. We didn't let, use Let's Encrypt um, for our study. We had um, an own fictive CA to abstract um, the process of getting a certificate. So um, what Let's Encrypt, in fact, does and what is why we really like it is it eases the interaction with the CA, um, but still hardening and integration still needs to be done at some point at least once. And our study focuses mostly on integration and on hardening of HTTPS. So let's have a look at the methodology that we used and about the data we collected um, in the course of our experiments. So first of all, we had a hard time recruiting administrators because um, administrators have very limited amount of time. Um, usually they're really busy. There are a lot of open job advertisements for um, administrators in our region. So they're mostly overworked. And regardless of the incentive, they don't really like to participate in such studies. So we had to um, base our data collection on students. But we wanted to choose students who really have good knowledge in terms of privacy enhancing technologies, security, what so on and so forth. So we recruited um, 
students who got really good grades in those subjects, um, who had industry uh, experience um, at least uh, to a certain point. Uh, and we also gave them a recruitment questionnaire to determine how much knowledge they really have in this field. So we gave this recruitment questionnaire to 117 uh, students. It was a multiple choice um, questionnaire and there were questions about basic Linux skills, server administration, uh, and TLS knowledge. So all those who completed the, um, the questionnaire, um, we reviewed them, and the top 30 candidates who participated were then invited to participate in the lab study. So the lab study then finally um, was done by 28 participants. Uh, we had a think aloud protocol to, um, to collect the data. So we had the um, written, um, written uh, notes uh, from the experimenter who observed them. Uh, we also collected the bash and browser history, and we collected all the configuration files and um, virtual machine images. So then afterwards, we gave them again a questionnaire. So also 28 participants um, filled out this questionnaire. It contained open and closed-ended questions and collected data on uh, yeah, demographics, previous work experience, uh, and so on and so forth. And then in addition, we had um, expert interviews, um, semi-structured interviews with seven security auditors to determine ecological validity of our study as it was conducted with students. So the participants from our lab study were um, two female, 26 male, which is to no surprise. Um, 17 were uh, quite experienced um, system administrators and 17 also uh, claimed that they had configured TLS before. So the data analysis um, proceeded as follows. We took the observation protocols and we performed a qualitative analysis using different types of coding. We used open, actual, and selective coding. Um, all the information on the coding process uh, and interrater agreement and so on and so forth are in the paper. Uh, we also collected the BASH uh, browser history and Apache log files, which we used mostly for a quantitative analysis. And we used metrics from the Qualys SSL test to um, give grades to the resulting configurations from A to F. So A is the best, F is the worst. And yeah, where possible, we of course provide statistical significance based on our data. So the security evaluation in the paper um, looks like that. It's a quite comprehensive table where we uh, analysis uh, everything in a very detailed way, but I will not go through the table. It's Friday afternoon, uh, and I will leave it up to you reading the paper, but I will point out some of the uh, highlights of the security evaluation. So only four participants uh, deployed an A-grade configuration. 15 deployed a B-grade configuration, and four participants did not manage to deploy any valid configuration at all in the given time. We will then a little bit uh, more see uh, why this is the case and what um, screwed it up, basically, or how it screwed it up. If we now compare those results to a scan from um, SSL Pulse, which was conducted at the same time when the study was uh, conducted and the data collected, we see that um, the configurations are slightly more um, towards uh, A-grade configurations, which um, might be the case because those websites maybe have uh, higher security requirements and um, presumably the administrators had much more time for the de deployment. So then again, two participants used self-signed certificates and didn't really get the difference um, between uh, regular certificates issued by the CA and self-signed certificates. Um, what was really good was that no participant chose a key size smaller than 2K for their RSA key. Um, 14 configured forward secrecy, 11 included HSTS headers, and two participants um, tried to deploy HPKP. So, when we take our data and after doing the qualitative analysis, we came up with a process model that models um, how easy or difficult it is um, or what steps are necessary um, to deploy um, TLS. And what we see here is that the deployment model is actually quite complex. So we have two different phases. We have a setup phase and we do have a hardening phase. And um, the setup phase contains um, steps like searching for information, creating a key pair, creating a CSR, interacting with the CA, uh, and then integrating the certificate into Apache. So after all these steps, what you get is a basic TLS configuration, which means that the site is reachable via HTTPS if requested. 
But then there is this hardening phase, which um, involves more steps even, um, and contains uh, some things that are maybe not clear in the beginning. And if all of them are completed in a certain way, what you get is a secure TLS configuration, which is what we desired because we told, we explicitly told the participants of our study that they had to make the configuration as secure as possible. They were um, administrators or taking the role as an administrators um, in a small, medium-sized uh, enterprise, uh, and they had to withstand with it a security audit. So this was what actually was desirable. So let's encrypt. Um, basically does the setup phase, um, if you take it as it is, and depending on the requirements of the websites, um, some additional steps might be necessary. So let's talk a little bit about the usability. Um, we asked the participants afterwards how hard or how easy they thought that the study task was, and um, more participants said that they thought that the whole thing was hard for them because they didn't really know um, when they were actually done. And they also said, we also asked them to list um, the biggest problems that they had um, during the configuration process. Actually, 19 participants said that finding the best practice workflow and finding the right piece of information online is very hard. 15 said that they find the terminology misleading, and 12 said that they find it very sad that the default configuration is so weak. So let's talk a little bit about the first point, which was mentioned by 19 participants, um, online sources and how to find the best practice workflow and the right source of information. Well, uh, one participant during the study said, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Neither am I aware of whether my online source is trustworthy. And this is actually the first problem, that it is really hard to find the right source of information and to find a workflow that is applicable to the system that they're trying to secure. And people strongly rely on that. So we, we, we observed that during the study and also um, the self-reported data from the post-study questionnaire tells us um, that they heavily rely on that because at some points they do lack of knowledge. Another participant said, the configuration process is fiddly and one has to Google tons of pages to get it right. Even then one cannot be sure to have a good configuration because vulnerabilities are discovered almost on a regular basis. And I have a very um, striking example for that. Um, a couple of months before the study was conducted, um, RC4, um, there was the issue with RC, RC4. So uh, an RFC already prohibited using RC4. So the question our participants had was, should I use RC4 or not? And some of the tutorials that they found online still didn't tell them that they shouldn't use RC4, but some of them did tell them. So it was very hard for them to find what should I do now? I mean, what is, what, what is the right information? And is there maybe any other information that is wrong or outdated that I'm not aware of? So the average number of visited websites per participant was 60, which I think is quite a lot for such a task. And we excluded like google.com and all these um, things. So um, what we also found, um, the statistics for that are in the paper, um, that the number of visited websites had no impact on the quality of the resulting configuration. But what we saw is that the decision-making process is mostly based on online sources, and that the participants had no real in-depth understanding of underlying fundamentals, and especially when it comes to cipher suites. So the problem that I see here is that we expect administrators to make fundamental security decisions which they are not capable of. And we have seen similar findings, for example, with stack, studies with Stack Overflow. I mean, I think this is a really good example because do you need a programmer who doesn't look up code at Stack Overflow and simply copy paste the solutions? I mean, this really is a problem. And if they don't really have online sources that help them to complete this task, well, I think this is sad. We also um, did some statistics on the impact of prior experiments, and we do have evidence to suggest that there is an association between prior experience with setting up TLS and the quality of the resulting configuration. So if they do it multiple times, um, it helps them to get a better grade. But we did not see any evidence um, that the previous employment as a system administrator impacts the configuration quality, which I think is shocking. Another usability problem that they said they had was that they found the file structure and the terminology very confusing. So for example, configuring the virtual host and the port was very time consuming. 
So they were copying and pasting around things uh, among the configuration files. Some were like, okay, what, what is the difference between my HTTPF conf and the Apache conf? Where should I put SSL engine on and this kinds of stuff. So Apache and the configuration file structure was really confusing for them and really distracted them from the main task. And actually, this was of those participants who did not manage to deploy any valid configuration had exactly that problem. That in the end, they made a mistake and they didn't know where it was, but the problem was mostly Apache and not TLS. Yeah, and also the same thing uh, happens with what is a self-signed certificate and what is a CSR. What is the difference between a .pem file and a CRT or um, any other file ending that they encountered? They didn't really know what the difference was. More usability challenges, uh, as we observed and uh, as were reported by our participants, well, they really struggled with the high effort for hardening because some of them just thought, okay, ha, my site is reachable via HTTPS, I'm done. And then they shortly noticed that, wow, my site is still reachable via HTTP. Why is this the case? Why doesn't HTTPS replace HTTP? And this was really hard for them to, um, to know what exactly are the hardening steps they should take. So they started Googling and they said, ah, okay, this is how I make um, the site only reachable via HTTPS and not via HTTP. Oh, there's plenty of other things I can do to harden my configuration. But then it was not entirely clear where this whole process starts and where it ends. And also, finding the right balance between security and compatibility was a problem. So as we told them that the configurations had to withstand an audit, um, they chose very often in favor of security. But is this really the case uh, in the real world? Well, I don't know, I don't think so. I think that very often compatibility um, is the major thing. And um, yeah, uh, the interviews with the security auditors afterwards will also shed light on this assumption. So talking uh, about the uh, interviews with the security auditors. so. The goal was to confirm the ecological validity of our results and to show that this is really what happens out there in the real world. So we recruited seven security auditors. Um, again, here, uh, it's not so easy to recruit um, specialists. We wanted to have um, security auditors from well-respected security consulting firms. Um, we recruited them in a German-speaking uh, region, so in Austria and Germany. And we only wanted to have people who really had an experience uh, more than two years in working as a security auditor. So we asked them a couple of things in the semi-structured interviews. We then coded the data, and here comes the analysis. So we first asked, asked them some um, obvious things like, how do you audit TLS connections in practice? And then they told us things like, OK, I ch I'm checking for activated TLS versions, activated ciphers. Um, we check whether the certificate is recognized by the web browsers and hardening things like HSDS, um, key pinning, et cetera. And the tools that they used, well, they used Qualys SSL test, what we also used as a baseline um, for our metrics. Um, they used Nmap uh, and some other tools, but they also said that they manually like to, to look at the files, at the configuration files, because it sometimes gives them really interesting insights in why things are not working the, out the way they should work out. So we ask them, what configurations do you find in the wild? What mistakes do people make? And are these mistakes the same that we found during our lab study? And yeah, they said that they often encounter poor ciphers, no hardening whatsoever, self-signed certificates that do not really um, uh, provide the full purpose. Um, and two auditors said that they had, for example, never seen uh, anything like HTTPS public key pinning during an audit, which, OK, it is arguable that public key pinning is not um, suitable for all scenarios, but that they never ever encounter it somewhere, um, I think is also a very interesting finding. And then they also said that when it comes to hardening, some companies do not really think that their site might be a target of a man in the middle attack because they just think it's not important enough. Maybe this also corresponds to the example of the local sushi restaurant. Um, I think that's, that's pretty much the case. They also said, and this is what, per, what I found personally shocking, and I hope that in other parts of the world it's different, but they said that there are administrators who during an audit say, I'm afraid of using crypto. This is bad. <coughs> and they also said that TLS deployment was not really sufficiently streamlined in companies. 
so very often companies have multiple servers that are updated separately and varying configuration and each of them is maintained manually and of course then it doesn't really work out um, and it's very very difficult to keep track of what's going on and then they also said that they have administrators who say that Okay, our configuration supports basic encryption. This is clearly better than no encryption, so why should I take any further steps to harden my configuration? Compatibility, let's talk a little bit more about that. Uh, one participant from the expert interview said, in most cases, backward compatibility is the showstopper regarding proper TLS, TLS configurations. And yeah, um, maybe in many cases this is true, but sometimes they said, it's just a mock argument because it's very easy to say, well, I don't need this because to me, compatibility is the most important thing. But still, finding the best fit is hard, even for experts. But it also depends here very much on what kind of site you are hardening because um, it is maybe easy to resolve for internally accessed services where you know very well uh, who your clients are and what versions they have. Um, but yeah, the compatibility problem is very often that they, they are scared of overloaded helplines because they have so um, limited amount of time and so much work to do that the worst thing that can happen to them is that the helpline is overloaded and everybody is calling and saying, I have a problem. But honestly, I mean, how many users does it really affect if Internet Explorer version lower than 7 is not supported? I mean, it's, I think, not so easy to um, decide what the best fit is here. We also asked them about the uh, improvements that they would suggest. So, of course, the, administra uh, the auditors all said that Let's Encrypt is great and it's really, really a good first step um, and people should really use it because it makes it easier and it also um, affected how it is streamlined in companies because the awareness that things need to be done um, has increased. And also they said that security should be there by default. And hardening steps should not be necessary. And one example is uh, the Caddy web server, which comes with Let's Encrypt. It has um, HSTS, OCSP stapling, and a quite good, um, uh, good um, uh, uh, reasonable, uh, reasonable cipher suits enabled. So good compromise between compatibility and security. And also they said that maybe compatibility flags would be helpful because um, if the administrators have no idea what the cipher suites do and why they should use some of them and others not, maybe they should not see the cipher suites directly and the names of the algorithms, but more flags that they can set to see, okay, this and this should be supported and this um, not necessarily. And also uh, the auditor said that companies need stronger guidelines and they said that the baseline should be deploy everything that doesn't impact compatibility, which, for example, is the ca case with HSTS, where headers, if not understood, are simply not used. And also they said that the desired goal would be that HTTPS should just fully replace HTTP. And, of course, a discussion that I think has been going on for ages in our community, which is that the concept of having CAs um, is basically flawed or should be overthought at least. So let's come to the conclusions. So what we have seen from our study is that configuring TLS on Apache is a challenging task, even for experienced users, and we should take this serious because we have seen people rely on online sources and they are not really capable of making those very complex security decisions. And also, um, the concerns are mainly driven by compatibility, so we should really think about how um, to uh, help solve this trade-off. And it is really hard to find reliable information sources. And even that there are some steps taken in the right direction, we see that this is not, not enough because we see outdated information on the internet that makes it even harder for administrators to work with them. So before um, I'm taking questions, I would really like to thank Google for supporting me to come here because I was one of the recipients of the um, Women in Computing um, grants. And now I'm happy to take questions. Konstantin Biznosov, UBC. Thanks for a great talk and a very interesting project. So your description of the struggles that your participants went through with HTTPS actually reminded me of cooking. When I cook, 
a meal, a dish first time. I burn things, spoil things, I don't know what I'm doing. But second, third, fourth, fifth times, further uh, I get better and better with it. So I have two questions uh, based on this analogy. One is that uh, how many of your participants actually already had experience of configuring HTTPS on web service, <coughs> and whether you saw any correlation between their performance and that experience. And yeah. my second question is whether, um, like, the study was done very well, but I wonder if it's different from real world, because in real world, administrators configure multiple web servers, and they do it on a regular basis, maybe one in three years or whatever it is. So as a result, they probably gain enough knowledge and experience and avoid many mistakes that they've done first time and many struggles later when they do it a second, third, and fourth times. Can you comment on these two questions? Yes. So um, the first question, uh, I had a slide about that somewhere. I don't know where. Um, yeah, so 17 participants were working as system administrators before, and 17 also had set up TLS before. Okay. Those were not the same. Um, here on the slide, you see the, that we found that there is an association between the prior experiments um, as setting, in setting up TLS, but we did, do not have any, we could not measure any impact of um, whether they were previously employed um, specifically as a sysadmin before. Yeah, the numbers for, for the tests are in the paper. Mm -hmm. And regarding your second comment, um, for sure, I mean, uh, one reason why we did those interviews with the auditors um, was actually exactly that concern, that we were afraid whether our results were ecologically valid. Um, but yeah, I think um, this is a qualitative study. So, um, of course, the numbers might not be... Um, the, the, the same in the real world, but still the struggles, I think, um, might be very similar. And as there are still so many um, sites that did not use it, do not use HTTPS out there, and there are still so many TLS misconfigurations out there, um, I think that this very well shows that it is a problem in the real world, and it doesn't affect just our study participants. So you basically are claiming that not, doesn't matter how let's, many Sorry, let's move on to the next question, sorry. Okay. Hi, Nick Sullivan, Cloudflare. Um, we know that TLS 1.3 is coming, and this is going to change the way that people have to configure uh, <clears throat> web servers, and uh, it, it comes with sort of fewer options and less ways to, to misconfigure it, but also you have the complexity of you know, a new protocol and maintaining compatibility with the old protocols. Um, is there anything from this research that can help inform web server uh, people who are designing the configuration for web servers for how they could make, you know, introducing TLS 1.3 something that is easier for people to do on the uh, administration side? Well, I think that the main point is actually that, um, as we have seen, that the uh, administrators are not sometimes not capable of making these security decisions. We should avoid them making those decisions. So. I think that the idea with the compatibility flags is actually good because it doesn't really help to present someone with a list of cipher suits and they don't understand what it is and what it is used for or what it does and why they should use one or the other one or the other one not. So I think that um, maybe we should just think of a, of a new paradigm in the design of what we present the user because even if administrators are knowledgeable in this field and they have completed several security courses and they have done it um, in their work life, it doesn't really tell us that they understand what they're doing and they're users too. So we should really think a little bit more about designing the tools so in a way that they can use them. They're users too. Great answer, thank you. Hi, Adrian, Port of Health, Google. Um, thanks, this is really interesting work. Um, you touched on this a little bit, and I was wondering if you could expand on it. I'm wondering, um, sort of, you know, what segment? You know, the web is huge, right? There's many types of websites. And what, what, which segment of website operators do you think that this study represents? That's a good question. Um, I think uh, it represents 
maybe it's easier to say what it doesn't represent. So it clearly doesn't um, represent a site which has very strong security requirements. So it does not represent a bank site, for example. But I think the spectrum that it, um, the spectrum that uh, those results are applicable to is maybe not that small because on, on the one hand, it does affect small companies where they have one administrator um, who does that, but also I think very much those uh, medium-sized enterprises. Because what, what we see, I mean, I think there are some regional, regional differences and what I actually really liked was how you pointed out um, that this is a, a problem uh, in Japan or in Japan some things are very different. I think this is the same here because in, in our region, um, everywhere administrators are, are searched. I mean, uh, there are so many companies that search for, for stuff that is capable of doing this work. And even larger companies sometimes do have people who don't really have enough education to do these things. I hope this answers your question. Yes, thanks. Otherwise, I'm happy to chat afterwards because I have some questions. <laughs> all right. So let's thank all the speakers for the session. It was a great session.